Hello, welcome to the Workflow Lab. My name is Fox, the education lead at Losan. In this video, we are going to talk about the Workflow Lab. Before we dive in, let's talk about what the Workflow Lab is. The Losan Workflow Lab is an interactive tool that provides a set of challenges to solve using the Losan Workflow Engine. The lab was inspired by tools like Project Euler and HackerRank, which help individuals learn to code through example problems and tests. The workflow lab itself is intended to be used by both new and experienced users to learn how to build workflows or find things about the workflow engine you didn't know before. In this video, I'm going to give you a walkthrough of how to set up a test, solve it, and see the results. If you're new to Losent or the Workflow Engine, it's highly recommended you take a look at Course 5 Workflows of Losent University. It provides a great foundation for building workflows, and this lab is an excellent follow-up to the course to sharpen your skills. Okay, now that you know what the Workflow Lab is, let's dive in. In the documentation, we created some pretty detailed instructions on how the lab works and how to set things up. This video will cover a lot of the same material. On the overview page, we created a special Hello World test to get you started. And to help you understand the workflow lab, let's solve this test and I'll explain things as we go along. So to start, this is the Hello World suite. The workflow lab is broken into test suites like math, array, template helpers, and more. Each suite covers a specific topic and each suite contains individual tests. Each test triggers a workflow with random input and expects a specific output. For each test, it is your job to build an application workflow that performs the test logic. Taking a look at our Hello World test, you'll see that our workflow will receive string one, which is hello, and string two, which is world. And our workflow must combine these strings and send back the results. If you notice, the suite also has an input field for a webhook URL. Webhooks are how the lab communicates with your workflow. So in order to use the workflow lab, we need to create a webhook. As you're making it, it's really important to check the wait for reply option. Generally, webhooks trigger a workflow and that thing that triggers it doesn't need any data back. But in this case, since the lab is testing your answer, it does need a reply. So let's make sure that's checked. Now, we can paste it into the suite and see how this whole thing works. Before we run the test, let's make a workflow that is triggered based off this webhook. A simple workflow to build would be a webhook trigger, a webhook reply, and a debug node. This will allow us to see what data we get when this webhook is triggered. Let's go back to the lab and trigger this test now. The first thing you should notice is that your test will fail, but we do get some helpful info when things fail. We get what the lab actually sent to our workflow, what the lab expected our workflow to return, and we get what your workflow actually returned. For this test, since it's our first one, these are always the same. But in the lab, these are randomly generated based off of what the test is asking of you. Now, let's solve the test. But before we move back to the workflow, notice one thing, the test ID. This helps us identify which test we're working on and running. Since there's only one webhook in the suite, the suite needs to let your workflow know which test it's asking for. The test ID is how, and we're going to see how to use that now. In our workflow, if we trigger the test again, we can see the debug output. And I want to point out a couple things. You can see the test ID under query and ID. The workflow lab is passing the ID as a query param on the webhook URL. This allows us to have different paths for different tests. We're going to use this in a switch statement in our workflow. To help you build out these workflows, we provide starter workflows for each suite. These workflows will have all you need to start building. Overall, as you do the workflow lab, we recommend a new webhook and a new workflow per suite. This will ensure you keep clean workflows. Now, let's solve the test. 
under data and then body will always be the test input from the lab. And it is your job to do something with this input and perform the test logic. In this case, you can see string one and string two, exactly what we expected. Our goal was to send back the combined strings. So let's do this. In order to perform this test logic, I am going to concatenate these strings using the string node and place the result at working.result. Since the workflow engine is so flexible, there are many ways to solve each test. If you get stuck or want to find the best solution, you can always take a peek at the solution workflows, but I wouldn't rely on them too much or else you won't learn anything. Now that we have our answer in working.result, let's format our response to the workflow lab using the webhook reply node. A couple of things here. We should configure a proper status code. 200 means that things are going well, so I'm going to put that here. Some of the tests do check for proper status codes, so keep that in mind. Next, we must configure the reply template. The lab expects the answer to be under a property called result. So let's put in our result object, and using templating, we can place our value at working.result here. Now it looks like we're all done. Let's run our test to see what happens. Yep, as you can see, our test is failing. Notice our output expects hello world to be in strings. This also isn't valid JSON. The workflow labs expects you to send back valid JSON so we can properly parse the output. Let's change a couple things in our workflow to make this happen. First, we can set the content type to JSON. This lets the workflow lab know that the content you're sending back is JSON. Next, in our template, we want to include a helper called JSON and code. This ensures that our output is formatted properly. If you're sending back strings or objects, this is very important. Now that we have this, let's hit run again. All right, it looks like things are working now. Notice that you see five trials. To make sure you solve the problem and to test different scenarios, the lab will trigger your workflow multiple times with different inputs. You see each trial by clicking on the name. Now, it looks like you are ready to tackle the workflow lab. If you have any questions, we created a category in the LOSAMP forums just for the workflow lab. We would love to hear your feedback. If there's anything we can do to make the tool better for you, let us know. Happy learning.